Hey guys, welcome to the Massive Iron Channel. I'm Steve Shaw. In this video, we're going to talk about strength standards. This is a video topic I've done before, but I brought on Faz, and Faz is going to present his standards. I'm going to present my standards. We're going to have some really good discussion, and hopefully it'll help you guys understand where or create some reasonable goals. And we're going to talk male and female. Uh, before we get into that topic, if you guys have any questions or comments, drop them down below. The best topic ideas I turn into videos just like this. All right. Before we get into this, I want to say that Faz has a YouTube channel. It is linked down below. I'm going to run a contest. You got to do two things. You got to go subscribe to his YouTube channel, link down below, and you have to leave a comment on one of his videos. I don't care. I'm going to go in and uh, check out some of the comments, something about Massive Iron in the comments. I'm going to give away five T-shirts, five T-shirts to anybody that follows Faz. And uh, I'm trying to help him grow his channel because he's uh, incredibly smart, and I have a man crush on him, so help him out, would you? All right, Faz. Uh, strength standards. Uh, I've made videos about this before. I've written articles about this before. Um, it's a popular topic. We're going to be talking – natural so let's dive right in let's lead with the bench press i got a little uh, scoreboard over here uh, <laughs> we're gonna i'll let you start each one uh, male bench press strength center and let's let's uh frame this by saying the strength standards are not just you know random they're not power lifting standards if you if somebody comes to you and says hey I want to build as much muscle mass as I can, or I want to look as good as I can. What are the strength standards? Where should I try to get my lifts up to over time? Is that a, is that a reasonable way to frame it, Fab? Yeah, I was going to add a little proviso in at the beginning as well, and just to say that this is what I would consider to be the beginnings of a lifetime goal of strength. So, this is the beginnings of being a very very strong person or it's the type of strength which you're going to need to be a good size to put on your initial 20, 30 of more pounds of muscle over the course of the first, say, let's say three to five years of training. So this is this is the type of strength which gets you into the conversation, right? Right. And for women, they'll be like, well, what about us? Usually I slice it at about a third. So when I talk about 30 pounds of natural potential for men, usually for women, I slice it in a third. There's not a lot of information on women. Maybe you have information I don't, but I usually use muscle standards as probably like eight to 10 for women. I mean, honestly, adding five pounds for a woman is going to change her, her physique dramatically yeah. Yeah, in, in a good way. You're not going to look like Arnold. So yeah. <laughs> uh, Baz, let's start with uh, bench press. Uh, and, you know, again, there's so many caveats here. Um, and we get, we got to, we got to talk about, normalized body weights. We're not talking about people that are like 370 and inherently unhealthy. So men that aren't, you know, aren't pushing the limits of obesity. What's a good standard for men? So I want to say right from the off, I'm thinking about three plates aside. So you've got about, I think that's about 308, or 315, sorry, in, uh, in America, and about 140 kilos uh, in England. I would say that level of strength, if you're at a reasonable body weight of, I would say, Steve, anywhere between 180 pounds to about 220 pounds, that's what I would consider to be reasonable based on height. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think that's a really good ballpark to work with. And, you know, 230, 240 from a longevity standpoint is still – okay it's when men get over that 250 yeah. mark things get dangerous so for most men yeah 180 to 200 yeah brilliant. so um how about women faz right so i mean i can draw on some personal experience here because i've trained quite a lot of very strong women um it's rare to see a natural female get into the 220 range. And I'm talking about natural female. The ones that I've mostly coached have weighed about 140 to 150 pounds. It's rare to see benches in the 220 range. Um, I'm thinking more about the 180 range for a female as a strength standard to be, to, to be very, very good, to have a very well-built upper body. That's my thoughts. Yeah, so uh, for me, and you can see here, obviously, I'm putting men first and women second. Uh, you know, I'm going to go with 315. Um, 
you know, it's it's pretty rare in commercial gyms where you actually see 315 tossed around legitimately, mm. you know, and uh, it's a lot more rare than it looks on the internet, uh, especially for men in those ranges, 180 to, to 220. A lot of the guys you see tossing around more than that are, are bigger. But, you know, I have worked with, uh, you know, uh, men's physique competitors that are – under 200 moving that weight and they look oh, yeah. great so you pretty much have to be somewhere in that range um for women you know i'm gonna i'm gonna uh, set a little bit lower standard uh because there's there's outside of power lifting i don't see a lot of consistency with women on the barbell bench press um most women I've trained that have had really good squats and deadlifts are still yes. relatively weak on the bench. So I'm going to set the bar a little bit lower and just try to get them to 135. And beyond that, you know, uh, you know, praise crumb, whatever you can get after that's good. But I just think most women never get to 135. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to counter you with just a, a little bit lower standard there fast. Don't hate me. <laughs> oh, actually, we should point out at this stage, for men or for women, the reason that these strength standards are actually relevant is that the majority of people, for their overall physique um, goals, they need to be getting yeah. more muscular. I think, Steve, you posted something about this recently on your Instagram and it was on, on, from your Twitter, and it was really good. But most people would do better just getting a bit more muscular. So this is why we're talking about strength standards, because it's super important. If you want to look really good, it's not just about being lean. You've got to actually have some muscle there. Yeah, and you know, Faz, there's a point people get to when the weight starts to feel heavy, and I've talked about this before, and it's a psychological battle. Oh, the weight feels heavy. I'm going to deload, or I'm just going to stay here for a while. Like, the weight feels heavy because it is heavy, and that doesn't mean you can't move it. Um, when I was squatting close to 700, I tell people 315 feels heavy because it is heavy. 405 feels heavy because it is heavy. And if I would stop there, you know, I would be done. Um, uh, when you're warming up on bench, you know, I got my bench close to 500 with uh, chains, but you know, 275 feels heavy because it is heavy. Yeah, uh, but it doesn't mean you can't do more. All right, so enough of that one. Uh, let's get rolling. Weighted dips, Faz. Uh, this is a lift which is near and dear to my heart. I, I did this, did the dips majority of my time in the first couple of. First two years of training, I did this probably more than a bench press for chest development. My goal at the time, which I reached, was my body weight, which was about 90 kilos, so about 200 pounds, plus 40 kilos, so about 90 pounds. So, uh, so I would say a good strength standard for a weighted dip would be about 290 total. So that's including your body weight. So let's say you weighed 220. Will it be less for you? Maybe just 70 pounds. So I would go with total body weight total weight including your body weight so i would go for a total of about 290 so i'm just going to put this as 90 down here because we were talking 180 to 200 or 220 range and a, a, the average 220 or 200 plus plus two plates mm -hmm. yeah so, right right so i was going to say the same thing um at my peak when i was younger when i was really attacking them i got up to two plates for, I don't know, it's been such a long time, eight reps, but I think that's a really, really good strength standard. Yeah. Now, for women, women tend to have weaker upper bodies fast, so where do you come in for the women? I've not seen even my strongest female powerlifter clients dip with that much. Um, so the strongest that I've personally seen is 15 kilos, so about 30 pounds. Um, and that's probably where I'd put it for a lighter female in the 130 to 150 range. Uh, about an additional 30 pounds it's a good and that that is what was the equivalent of that lady had a very very good bench press she was a she was a national caliber athlete so it's a good standard yeah and i was gonna i was uh, gonna come in at about 25 so we're right there yeah. i mean the the advantage for women is that they have a lighter weight to work with um so I think the dip is a little bit more leverage friendly for the average female than maybe the bench press. Would you agree with that? I believe so, yeah. I think it's something to do with um, limb lengths as well because I was always at a better time with dips and I tend to have longer arms in perspective. So, yeah. But, possibly. you know, you don't, uh, you don't really see a lot of women doing full dips. I see them on the no. assisted dip or assisted pull-up machine. Yeah. So 
Regarding pull-ups, um, Faz, are we talking pull-ups or chins here? There... So I went with I went with chins because I like to have the um, the the fist uh, the hands facing the body. So I went with chins uh, around about shoulder width. Uh, I think I think that's the best bang for your buck in terms of overall lat and bicep development. Mm -hmm. I think the wide grip sort of pull-up is a little bit more upper back um, and like terrace major traps, all that kind of stuff. So weighted chins, I would say, is a great all-round movement. Now for that. I would be looking at roughly um, body weight with about a plate aside would be a good strength standard for strict reps. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, emphasize strict reps. Um, yeah. You know, one of the things that I preach to people I'm working with is don't air break. Like they'll stop halfway down with their arms <laughs> um, and put a lot of stress on their joints and their biceps and, and, and things like that. So, Nice, controlled, full range of motion. Uh, you know, nothing that's going to beat up the body. Um, you know, this is, uh, you know, chins, I might go a little bit heavier, uh, maybe up to 60. But, you know, we're really splitting hairs. Um, nice. You know, it's chins are a little bit more leverage friendly for the average individual than pull-ups. But really, once you get to 45, four reps, you know, you're in a good place. So we're just splitting hairs here. How about for women? Yeah, for women, I'd say the, the most that I've seen on a very well-developed female was uh, chins with about 20 pounds attached. So about a 10 kilo plate. So like a half. Yeah. So was that for a single or is that for multiples? I think that was for a set of five. She was doing fives. I, mean, I would consider that to be extremely strong. Yeah, well, this one, uh, this one, you know, if a woman gets strong at, at chins, like she actually works them, I think 25 is a fair number uh, because, you know, the body weight she's starting with, it's a more leverage-friendly move. And if she's 140, 150, 130, whatever it happens to be, I don't think that's an unrealistic goal uh, at all. So I put down the barbell and dumbbell row. Um, and, man, you know, Faz, over the years – uh, I mentioned this yesterday, but there was a time in my life after 10, 11, 12 years of training where I thought 120 by 10 on the dumbbell row was Herculean, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, then I increased my expectations and I got up to like 220 for 20. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm like, it opened it, you know, it, it opened my mind a lot. So I think I would say the average individual, regardless of where our strength standards fall, the average individual has a lot more potential on their rows than they think they do. Is that fair? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, definitely. Um, with regards to dumbbell rows, I mean, I still think, I think 120 for a 10 is a very good standard. I do. I think that's a good, probably entry level standard. So I would say, yeah, about 120 for the dumbbell. The barbell, I want to say is a lot more variable in my book, um, just simply because I think form varies massively. So the way that you have the traditional bodybuilding way of doing things is to be slightly more, uh, upright, the way that, say, a Dorian Yates might do a, a row, like a, like people would call that a Yates row, I guess, but that's the majority of what you see in the gyms. I think the strength potential there is a lot higher, and something like 300 pounds there would be quite A-OK. -okay. I, however, think if you were to do it stricter, more in the way that maybe a Mike Isretel would recommend doing them, a good strength standard there is nowhere close to 300. It'd be more like 200 for strict reps. So, um I think it really it highly depends on performance. And I think that's why there's quite a lot of variance with the dumbbell row as well. So, yeah, I mean, the, the barbell row is one of the few exercises that I find myself just smacking my head because there's so many ways to cheat it, fudge it, uh, and not get the most out of it. It's probably one of the most abused and misunderstood exercises. Um, and, you know, when you get to the point where you're virtually upright and you're just doing like twitching, you know, for a, an inch range of motion, you know, moving 400 pounds, there's really not a lot of value. So I do penalty rows. I would say 275 on that variation. I'll just stick with that yeah. uh, for five. I, I think that's a reasonable standard. Yeah. And, um, you know, for dumbbell rows, I, I'm I'm more aggressive. I want to see 150, and I know most gyms don't have it, but I don't I don't care. I, I think the average individual can row a lot more than than that. Um, so I, I'm going to toss out 150. Now, 
this is an exercise I find women tend to do a lot better than they expect. So what do you think as far as the ladies go? I think with the women for, um, I, I guess I'll talk about barbell because that's where I have most of my experience. Um, I would say something like a strictly performed bent over row for reps, a 135 would actually be pretty strong. And how about dumbbells? For dumbbell, yeah, quite quite a lot less. I, I'd say more like a 70 would be very strong, like very, very strong. A 35 kilo dumbbell row for a woman who weighs probably uh, double that would be really strong, yeah. So uh, you just made a lot of men watching uh, Twitch and uh, have a mini aneurysm because um, – you know, a, a lot of guys out there at 70 pound dumbbell rows, but again, uh, yeah. you know, I, I love you guys, but you need to nut up a little bit. Um, you have a lot more potential than that. Uh, you know, 135, I was going to say is good for women. And I was going to come in at around 70 myself for the, uh, for the dumbbell row. Um, you know, I, I think I've seen teens and women like really early teens, uh, that have spent a year training with me, moving 70s and dumbbell rows. Um, you know, I've had my daughter up to 50 when she was 100 pounds, so I think that's reasonable. So squat, wow, you know, squat is an, a lift that everybody uh, obsesses with, but some people just really aren't uh, built for it, you know. So um, what do you think about squat standards? I think I think your basic four plate aside for the squats. That's what I would go for. That is what I set my sights on to achieve, <laughs> and I did that. I think it took me something like four years of training, and I was I was powerlifting after my first year of training. So I was competing as a powerlifter, and so I was just full steam ahead trying to get that four plate aside squat, and it took me four years to do it. But that's what it took. Um, so yeah, I would still say that's a great goal, great great goal. And, you know, the ladies, I will say that this is a wider variance than men when it comes to squats, because if a woman comes to me and has naturally super thick thighs, I'm like, we are going to be squatting a lot of weight right out of the gate. Women tend to, women tend to just have this thigh variance where they're, you know, you'll see a lot of women with naturally thin thighs, or you'll see women come to you that are just built with these powerful legs out of the gate. So what are your thoughts? With that said, what are your thoughts on squats for women? Yeah, I've been blessed to have worked with a lot of very strong female bodybuilders and, and powerlifters. And uh, I find that this is, this is we're now getting into the type of territory where the women are really not lagging far behind at all, if at all. You know, we're, yeah. if, we're, if we're basing this on body weight, I mean, right now on the books, I've got a female lifter who's, I'll just say, I know her number's in uh, kilos. She's about 67 kilos, and she's regularly squatting 110 for reps. <laughs> 67 is what, about 140 pounds, 50 pounds? Yeah, and she's, reg yeah, she's regularly squatting uh, 242 pounds for a set of five. Um, so <laughs> and that's multiple sets of five. So, and I fully expect her to get stronger. I've had women on the books squatting a lot more than that. So I think this is an area where pound for pound, they're going to be lifting about the same. So because females are tend to be smaller, I would say maybe three plates, so about 315 would be a good squat. But yeah, don't sell yourself short, ladies. Like you've got the guys in this in this lift. So um, people might be shocked, but I'm going to uh, come in at a little bit lighter, 365 by five, simply because there are so many train wreck squat forms. Uh, <laughs> people are programmed to think they have to do low bar wide stance. I would say 90% of my work as a coach is deprogramming people, mm. um, you know, building them up from the base because they, they, they're doing it one way and they got so many cues in their head that they turn a natural movement into an unnatural movement. And if I could get somebody up to 365 for multiple sets of five, I think they're going to be pretty much set. Mm. Now for women, I'm going to do a variance here of 185 to 275. And here's what I mean. Uh, the average, like somebody like my wife with um, really stick legs, you know, just born out of the womb, not a lot of leg muscle. If you can get them the 185 by five, I think that's pretty good. Yeah. 
Um, now, the second number, 275, is actually a little bit low. And um, this will probably make a few of the men twitch as well. But I have trained five women in their first year that came to me that had really thick legs. Now, you can smirk and make all the jokes you want that they were probably a little bit heavier. But you know what? Even if they were, were 180 to 200 to 220 pounds, that's still the same weight as you guys. <laughs> um, and in the first year on competition, I've had them squat 275 to 365 on the platform. First year. Uh, um, a lady came to me uh, four or five years back, the last one I trained, Jasmine, Never had squatted before. She said she wanted to do powerlifting. And after uh, four months, she did 225 for 20. I mean, just it is what it is. So 275 might be a little bit on the low end. But for a woman that has those bigger natural legs, you probably pretty ha much have to get to 275 uh, or you're not living up to your potential. Yeah. So uh, with that said, deadlift, and we all know sumo is cheating. Fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So with the with the deadlift, I guess I should. I mean, I was going to lead off with saying five plates. Uh, however, I would say a similar proviso to what Steve said with the squat. That five plates would be more like four and a half for reps, or more like four for reps. So if a guy is regularly pulling, let's say, what is that about four fifty, or in English money about two hundred kilos for sets and reps. He's bang on. He, he would be able to do a five plate single. So, yeah, that's kind of my my proviso there. I'd, I'd, if we're talking reps, I'd put it right in that sort of range, about 50 pounds off what I would want for a max. For females, again, they, they can be right up there. It's just a case of we're looking at um, the pound for pound strength should be about similar. We know that I think there have been studies on this where Brad Schoenfeld's perhaps done something on this. Uh, somebody will quote me in the comments um, where the actual strength potential of females in the lower body is equal pound for pound to guys. So if we're saying lower poundages, it's really just because most females tend to be smaller. That's why. So I'd put that down to about, yeah, about 350 for reps. Okay. You know, I am uh, right there with you on deadlifts. I would say 450 for a sweet set of five. Yeah. Um, you know, four plates and a 25 on each side, you know, 445 by five. Uh, most men should get there. Uh, as far as women, it's kind of the same story. Uh, you know, the the thicker legged women, you know, I've had them pull 365, four or five in competition. But, you know, we are talking muscle for the average woman. And even my daughter, when she trained with me, we trained a year without actually doing the deadlift. And then we worked, we started doing block pulls just to get her into the feel of things. And she got close to 275 at a body weight of 104. Nice. Uh, so, so, you know, it's, um, wow. You know, for women, I'm going to say like 275 to, um, you know, maybe 350. Yeah. Depending yeah. on, you know, what their lower body uh, build is. So mm -hmm. now the RDL is uh, fast. Um, that is, I find it a little bit easier to actually teach than the deadlift uh, because people don't have pre-programmed ways of, of doing it and overthinking. So what do you think about the RDL? Yeah, big fan of this movement. Uh, RDL or, or stiff leg deadlift, um, is, I, I include that in most programs. Um, I will say, though, that this the poundage potential tends to be a lot lower just because we're looking at a very strict movement, depending on how you teach it. You know, I, I teach it really uh, butt back arched back and a slight bend in the knees. Um, so I would say for that, for sets and reps, even just two and a half plates aside for an average size male would be challenging in my books. And I'd say about a plate and a half for female would be challenging. Um, a properly performs Romanian deadlift for, uh, for sets of five. So you said two and a half and one and a half about 275. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's fair. Um, you know, men, I'd probably say 315, just a hair lighter or a hair over. And for women, I would probably do 175 to 225, uh, you know, the naturally strong woman. But it's not something I generally uh, have a lot of experience 
with women in the long run. Um, you know, the women, when they come to me, I'm basically working them on the deadlift. And, you know, I'd rather have them do block pulls or whatever from the start to get kind of a basic understanding of the deadlift before we advance. But I would say somewhere in that range is, is reasonable. So uh, overhead press, probably arguably the weakest overall lift for men and women compared relative to their other lifts. Definitely. Uh, so how do you feel about the, the overhead press? And I'm going to say it doesn't matter seated or standing. I hit a 315 seated. I hit a 315 behind the neck press. My strength behind the neck and my strength in, in front it seemed to be pretty much the same. So how do you feel about overhead press for men? I think this is one where, like you say, it's it's the weakest lift. Um, and put, I would say particularly for women. I, I've hardly ever seen um, a woman do a strong, strict overhead press because it's simply a weak movement overall and women don't tend to be as strong in the upper body um, just due to the structure. So, um, yeah, for guys, a two-plate side overhead press, um, where they're seated, I mean, particularly strong standing, uh, that would be tremendous to see. And you hardly ever, those are even rarer than a three plate aside bench. And for women, I'd say just an overhead press of a plate aside, strict, I'd say that's some good going. I hardly ever see that. Yeah, so I'm going to, you know, 225 by five is a little bit high uh, for me. I'm going to come in a little bit lower, you know, 205 by five. Um, and for women, I'm going to come in at 95. I just, I just, uh, you know, have a hard enough time getting a woman to a hundred pound bench, 110 pound bench beyond that plateau. So I'll set the standard a little bit lower there. I was just talking with a um, female bikini competitor this morning on Instagram, and she's struggling to get, you know, even add uh, two and a half uh, or five pounds because you know in the gym you gotta you gotta add those two and a half pounds in America. Mm. It's a big jump, and I, I yeah. you know. So it's going to be a little bit more of a struggle for women, and I wish they had some uh, microplates at the gym so they could do some of these barbell exercises. But long story short, I'd almost prefer them to do dumbbells more than barbells, especially for their goals, So, which is to look better. Uh, dumbbell overhead press, you said you don't have a lot of experience with this, correct? Yeah, I don't have much experience on this, so I guess I would default to the 80% rule. Uh, and if people are at home aren't aware of that who are listening, generally, in my experience, I've found that the combined total of the dumbbells tend to correspond to about 80% of the barbell lift. So, yeah, for overhead press, 225 for a single, I would say we would probably be looking at yeah, about 180, so about 90 pound dumbbells for a, for a guy for a single. Um, for, for reps, single. for a single, yeah. So for and that would be the 225 for a single as well. So for reps, yeah, maybe 80s, 70s. Okay. Yeah. I think I'd say that's strong. Yeah, 80, 85, somewhere around yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And how about for a woman? For a woman, yeah, I, a lot less. Um, again, if we go with the 80% rule, um, what are we looking at here? Yeah, probably mm, 40 pounds, I think, 40 to 45s. Maybe, yeah, like a 20 kilo aside. So, yeah, 45s I think would be pretty reasonable for reps. I, I, well, I say reasonable, that would be strong. Yeah, we're, we're pretty close. I mean, I'm going to go with 85, 90, and uh, 40, um, and we're not that far off. I Do I think – I mean, most men will never get there. You know, it's uh, – the, the, the single – one of the most single most memorable things I've ever done in the gym was I remember in 1997, I did a set of seated dumbbell overhead presses, 120s for fives, and – it is one of the greatest memories I have because like at the time, you know, not, I'm not trying to, you know, um, elevate myself, but like I loved shoulder pressing and it wasn't until then where I realized nobody else loves shoulder pressing and people were looking at me like a circus act. <laughs> but I mean, I later I got to, you know, where I was doing one tens for multiple sets of 10, but for the average individual, I think 85 to 90s for sets of 10. Yeah. And uh, for a woman, you know, we're about the same. So let's talk bicepticons, everyone's favorite. Uh, yes. Well, not everyone. 
you know, a lot of guys like me just don't find it very exciting to train arms. So how, how do you feel about curling? Yeah, I think you and I might have similar thoughts on this because I, I, it's not one that I put, I've put a great deal of attention in on during my powerlifting career, and it's not one that I'm particularly strong on, which may influence how I feel in terms of what I've seen. Um, but I would say for, for most guys who are on my books who are strong, we're looking at about a 50 kilo for reps. So that is about what a 100, 100, yeah, 110 pounds for reps. I would consider that to be on the high end of, you know, we're looking very strong there. Um, yeah, one temper reps will be will be strong. Um, for females, I'd say yeah, quite a lot less. I mean, if we're looking at about thirty kilos, which is about sixty five pounds for reps, I think that would be strong for a female with a barbell kill. Yeah. You said about uh, sixty five. Yeah, sixty five. Okay. So yeah, sorry, I was trying to process my own thoughts. I mean, I've seen guys doing one thirty fives by fives. You know, some of my beast clients. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to come in probably 115, 125 range, um, just somewhere in that range. I mean, we're, we're really splitting hairs because, you know, I prefer to you to have quality reps, nice controlled reps. Uh, if you want to throw in some cheat reps at the end, I'm okay with that. Uh, at the end of a, a set to get, you know, some bonus contraction. The, the, the barbell curl is one of the few exercises I feel where a cheat rep can be beneficial at the end to squeeze out one or two extra. Um, and I don't know, uh, you know, 65 is pretty, pretty good for a woman. You know, that's uh, a 10 on each side. Yeah. Um, so that, that's reasonable. I mean, that's, that's pretty darn good. Now, close grip bench fast. I find that so many of the men that come to me think their benching and their grip is close grip bench. Uh, so this is some. This might be a semantics <laughs> debate, but you know, in the powerlifting world, we're used to kind of uh, you know where our fingers have to be relative to the rings. And for me, pinky on rings, uh, you know, is close grip. Uh, how is how is your close grip? I'm about um, extended thumb away from the smooth. That's my close grip. So okay. about shoulder width, yeah. Yeah, so we're a li little bit different. Yeah. But, you know, most men that come to me, um, they're a thumb away or they have pinky on rings. So they're they're more yeah. like our close grip. So what do, you, what do you say about close grip bench? Well, it's funny with a close grip because my first ever three-plate aside bench was a close grip. Like I, I only ever used to bench close grip. That was my strongest way to press. So, yeah, weird one. I would say for that, for the average guy, though, um, you're looking at about, Two plate aside for reps would be equivalent, I think, to a two and a half plate aside for reps regular bench. So roughly the three plate aside that we agreed at the beginning. So yeah, I think two twenty five for reps is a very very strong set, strong strength strength standard. And for women, you're looking at quite a lot lower, I'd say, um, maybe half that. Yeah. So we'll just we'll just put one ten for uh, yeah. Goodbye. I'm gonna put two seventy five. I think. Um, just because I have faith in the triceps a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't know. Um, you know, 275 for five. If you're doing 315, you know, for, for a few reps, I think you can get close to that. For women, you know, somewhere somewhere 100 to 110. Or, or whoops, somewhere 100 to 110. Yeah. So that's about it. We don't differ too, too, uh, too greatly, but really – you know, if you're anywhere in these ranges and you are applying yourself over a period of three, four, five years, you're going to add a lot of muscle mass. I mean, Faz, uh, you know, what are your thoughts on this in general, just as an end cap? We, there are a lot of, like when you dive into hypertrophy or hypertrophy, depending on, uh, you know, how you want to say it, um, there's, it's not complicated, Right, we're we're understanding basically it's it's not super complicated, but still there's enough distractions to pull you away from like I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta do this. When in reality, if you spend time and consistent and you build your strength levels to these, you're gonna have a lot of muscle mass. Yeah, I mean 
uh, we, Steve and I have both surpassed these lifts massively in, in our careers, but every client that I've taken to these sort of strength levels has had a drastic change of physique. And that's what we're talking about here. This is not just strength for the sake of strength. And right. also, conversely, if you're currently, say, benching two plates aside, there's no point going out tomorrow and getting your spotter to help you with three plates aside. That's not going to get you the muscle mass, which is matches a three plate aside bench. This should be an incremental gain over the next couple of years, which should result in a much bigger, leaner, more muscular physique. So I think these are all achievable goals. And they will help you in your quest to being as big and strong as you can get. Um, One thing I like to stress, Faz, uh, is that whenever I meet a natural lifter, and we're talking natural here, that has a quality amount of muscle mass, uh, and by that I mean their body fat percentage is under 20 and their arms are, say, over 16, um, they look good, right? Yeah, they, they look muscular like everybody else wants to look. Invariably, their strength standards are somewhere in this conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, I, I recall back in the day when I was with Muscle and Strength, I went to film one weekend I was with Mr. Minnesota, and the next weekend I was with Mr. North Carolina. And uh, I was with, uh, then I was with Stu Yellen from T Nation. Um, people probably don't remember that name. So I got to see two naturals and and just a, a, a non-competitor. And um, I recall Mr. North Carolina, he heard I was powerlifting. He's like, oh, I'm weak, you know. So we're filming him, and he does 150 by 10 on the dumbbell bench, right? I want to film Mr. Minnesota. He's like, I'm weak. He does like 130 by 15 on the dumbbell bench, right? Uh, so, yeah, I mean – you will not find anybody naturally that's muscular that doesn't have some pretty damn impressive uh, strength strength themselves. So any any final thoughts, Faz? Yeah, I just want to have one final thought just to speak on Steve's point when talking about not letting things distract you. Now, there have been a lot of conversations over the last 10 years. There's been a wave of hypertrophy research which has looked at frequency, intensity, volume, and there seems to be a, a new study out every week which deals with one nuance of this. All I want to say is that those nuances typically deal with the one or 2%. Don't let that derail you in your overall efforts to get bigger and stronger, because this is the 99%. This is what you need to be doing, is just getting to these strength levels. Um, Try not to let yourself get distracted by the various loud voices in our evidence and fitness community, which want to make their case known about higher volumes or lower volumes or training to failure or not training to failure. Keep your own mind focused because you can distract yourself for even a number of years and that's years of your life, then you've you're pretty much wasted. Don't let these people who are in the industry who are talking about the one and two percent details distract you from the overall goal, which is to get bigger and stronger. Yeah, you go into the gym, you you try to control the weight, uh, meaning you not slow the weight, but don't throw it around like a lunatic. Control the weight. Uh, remain consistent with your nutrition and your training. And in my world, we talk about plus ones, which is just going into the gym with a mindset like I'm going to add one rep to my performance on this exercise, three, four, two sets, whatever you're doing over last time. That mentality uh, along with practicing safe sets will take you a long way. So, Faz, I appreciate you being on the channel. You can find Faz on YouTube and on Instagram at Faz Lifts. And, again, I'm going to link down below to anybody that made it this far in this video as a reminder, Faz's channel. If you go over and subscribe and leave a comment on any of his videos about just mention Massive Iron or I came here for Massive Iron or whatever, I'm going to give away five T-shirts. And if I get a big enough response, I might even give away a free month of coaching. All right, Faz, thanks for uh, joining me, and I'll talk to you later. Take care.